Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany Beeston from Beauty and the Beastons and every single Sunday I try to upload a motivating video to get you ready for the week ahead. Today's video is a little different because it is a party prep video where I'm going to be showing you what I did for my daughter's second birthday, which was a ballerina birthday brunch. Um, I have two boys first and then I had my first girl two years ago today when you're watching this and it has just been so much fun doing all of the girly things just because it's such a different world for my boys who want Power Rangers birthdays and Baby Shark birthdays and things like that. So you can see all of those party preps. I'll have them linked in the description box below in my party prep playlist. But basically my goal in these videos is to show you how I do things. I try to make things simple on myself but still be hands on. I like to save money anywhere I can and I like to make it special for my kids. So that is the goal here. So the first thing that we're doing is working on this cake stand and this actual like cake stand is from Target Dollar Spot. I've had this since Carter's first birthday cake smash. So it's been around for five years now, but I've been seeing these tutu cake stands on Etsy and I love them, but I don't love the price. So I looked at how much the materials would be to make it myself on how I thought you would make it. And uh, it was a lot cheaper and I really like how it came out. So this wrap here I got from Amazon. It was very inexpensive. And then I just found some twine in my junk drawer and that's how I'm holding it together here. And it worked out perfectly. This little cardboard glitter circle is from Michaels, which I love when you can plan your kid's birthday ahead of time and you can go to Michaels and Joanne Fabrics multiple times because they always have great coupons and you don't have to go and get everything all in one day. If you're being budget friendly, you always, always, always look on your phone for a Michaels or Joanne Fabrics coupon. And if any moms or anybody that's like watching this right now has any tips on how they keep their birthday parties budget friendly, leave them in the comments below. Also, I feel like I should do a disclaimer here that um, we just had our family over. We didn't do like a giant birthday party. We haven't been, um, you know, staying away from our family. We've been seeing them um, probably and for a few months now and we plan to continue to see them. So although this birthday party was much smaller, it was still perfect. So speaking of those Michaels coupons, I had gotten giant rolls of tool from Amazon and then I wound up seeing these at Michaels when I had my coupon. You can see the giant rolls of tool next to me. I'm sure as a girl mom, I will need them at some point. So I'm not going to return them. I'm going to keep them because they were inexpensive. However, when I saw that these strips were pre-cut at Michaels and I had a coupon, I was like, okay, I have to just make my life easier and use the pre-cut strips so I can just make one singular cut and call it a day, know that they will all be even. So first I'm just starting with the lighter pink tool and then I'm gonna go in with the gold glitter tool. It is the next day and I'm getting ready to make the cake, but first I'm gonna finish up the cake stand. I took it easy and I'm using box cake this time. If you watched any of my previous party prep videos, you know I usually make the cake from scratch and it just really is not worth it for us. So to save time, I'm doing a box cake. So yeah, box cakes are fine too, you guys. Whatever you need to do is what you need to do. You can't do it all. 
Um, so it's the next morning and I'm realizing this is not gonna stay that well. So I'm going in with my hot glue gun. I apologize for the shaky footage, but it was really challenging to hold the camera and show you guys just exactly how I was doing the hot glue. But in the end, it came out perfectly. Now I'm just working on this too. I got both the two and the pink paint from Joanne Fabrics and I am using some gold glitter I had left over from Christmas 100 years ago and I usually just get the glitter for crafts and stuff from the Dollar Tree. So this is what the finished product looks like. And then I'm also gonna show you just how um, the glue dried and everything looks nice on the cake stand as well. Now it is finally cake time. I'm using two boxes of gluten-free Funfetti cake. Um, and this was like a rare occurrence because usually, I mean, I cook with my kids all the time, but usually I don't do my party preps when they're awake. But being that I'm 25 weeks pregnant, I just can't stay up all night anymore as I record this voiceover at 11 p.m. Uh, I can't stay up all night anymore doing the birthday parties because usually when I do stay up, I wind up getting sick and it's just not good. So I just decided to start everything with them during the day and see how it goes. They were amazing making the cake with me. Um, you'll see when I do the balloon arch, they got a little crazy and we're playing with the balloons, but it was still manageable. So yeah, I feel like I always want to wait to get like their reaction the next day and like surprise them when they see the decor. But Ella, you'll see in this video, was still just as surprised and excited. And I feel like they all really loved being involved with everything. So. I think I will continue to do my party prep videos in the day with them when they're awake if they allow it.
So now I'm just putting the cakes in the oven and then um, my husband, Chris, brought up the tables from the basement that we use for all of the parties. I think it's time to invest in new tables. These ones are just, I feel like they've had their run, um, but the kids really liked helping clean it off and everything. And I'm just putting this tablecloth on. This was actually left over from Ella's unicorn first birthday party last year. You can't really tell from this lighting, but it's kind of like iridescent and has like a gold type glittery glow to it. So it wound up being perfect for this. I also usually do like some kind of backdrop here, whether it's like something that I order that says our name on it. But for this, I just wanted some glitter and just like a slight shimmer background for where her banners would be at and for behind the balloon arch that I'm getting ready to make. So this was actually a curtain that I ordered from Amazon and it wound up being perfect, exactly what I wanted in that spot. This is the first time that I purchased a balloon arch kit, which is just like a bunch of balloons, balloon tape, um, and the thing that you guys have been telling me to buy forever, which is the balloon tire, which honestly, guys, I just could not figure it out. And I was like, okay, this is wasting my time and I just didn't use it. So I don't know, I need to practice with it, I guess. So here's the balloons. I'm happy everything came together well with the colors. The balloon arch that you see here in this video, this is my second time using this arch. It was also very inexpensive. Usually I use balloon tape, but from our last party prep video, which was a Power Rangers party prep video, I noticed that the tape takes a lot more time and a lot more balloons. So I feel like having this metal arch and saving it for all of your parties is just like a great investment because again, it's not that expensive. It's definitely more than the um, balloon arch tape, which isn't that much, but I think it was worth the investment. Just like this, um, oh my gosh, I can't find the words. The thing that blows up the balloons, whatever it's called. Um, I finally got one of those because of you guys, and this is the balloon tire, and yeah, I just could not figure it out to save my life, but the cakes are done. They're out of the oven. I'm flipping them over and letting them cool. And you can see there's like cracks all over. They're not even close to perfect, but it's okay because done is better than perfect. So this is the balloon arch that I'm telling you about. So it looks like it comes straight. However, once you connect them onto the table, it's like a perfect arch. And we pretty much always use this table in front of that window anyway um, and we didn't plan on doing anything outside this time usually for our summer birthdays we have pools outside and do like all of that kind of stuff but it's just been so hot and the bugs have been bad but today wound up being beautiful so we did open up birthday presents outside and do the pinata out there um, but it was nice everything was perfect so what i showed you is what also comes with the balloon arch it's like a little plastic ring and I've been putting on four balloons. I think you can do up to five, but I've been putting four on and then using them on the arch. And it just takes up more space this way as if when you use the balloon tape, I maybe it's just me, but I use like double, at least double, maybe triple the amount of balloons. So I definitely feel like this is the way to go. We connected one side to the table and then slid them on that way because the last time we, again, blew up way too many balloons and we just kind of wanted to gauge it better because we wasted so many balloons last time and I felt awful. Okay, so the balloon arch is done for now. You'll see that I add on to it a little bit later, but now I'm just hanging up these banners that I got from Etsy. I do have a Cricut. I just 
have not been able to like sit down with it and really truly figure it out. The most I've done with it is make shirts for Disney and the stuff peeled right off of my shirt. So that was a fail. Um, I did make like oil labels and stuff like that. That worked out pretty well, but yeah. I totally should be making this stuff on my Cricut, but I just went to Etsy and purchased it because again, you can't do it all. I try to pick and choose and make it like slightly easier on myself without just, you know, buying everything and doing some things myself if I can. So I really love how this turned out. Ella is so into dancing. As you know, if you've been here for a while, she pretty much came out dancing and has just been my little dancer. She took ballet this year and she's just, She's so into it, she loves it. So here is my last minute edition that is from actually my 32nd birthday, um, which was July 10th. Chris bought me balloons and everything, but I wound up like having to work and do stuff the whole day. So we didn't even get to blow up my balloons. So it worked out good because I was able to have these cute little rose gold stars and I feel like it just really tied in all of the decor because I have issues with like choosing rose gold versus regular gold. So I kind of had rose gold and regular gold mixed throughout the party. So it all wound up coming together really nicely. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, you know the story behind this. Comment below if you know what in the world happened with this balloon. Balloon arches are super intimidating. When I see one, before I start doing them myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, these are beautiful, so hard to make, and it's not true. It is time consuming, yes, but I just feel like it really adds so much to your party, and they're inexpensive, but one thing that I've recently discovered, because every time I make a balloon arch, I you know, improve in some way or learn in some way. Um, so that's like if you see gaps that are bothering you, just go ahead and tape balloons on where you want them. So I am obsessed. This is probably my favorite balloon arch yet. Next up is another banner that I purchased from Etsy. And the great thing about this was that it came as like one huge banner and I was able to cut it to make three different banners. And it really just gave the house like that little <laughs> ballerina flare that I was going for um, besides tutus. I probably get these blow up happy birthday balloons for every single birthday because I just feel like it's an easy piece of decor and it takes up a lot of space and it just looks really nice every time.
Finally, we are moving on to the cake, which was pretty much a disaster if I'm being honest. Um, it was not my best cake, but I decided to give myself some grace instead of being incredibly hard on myself and no one really cared except for me. So it is what it is. I got this pink icing from Michaels just to have like the perfect color pink. And then I decided I wanted to do like an ombre cake with these pretty like flowers that I was gonna do by myself with icing after watching 15,000 YouTube videos on how to do it. And I think that like I was just making the icing too hot with my hands and I was getting like a little bit anxious because the kids were starting to get like needy and everything and just being loud. It was like, you know, the witching hour after um, dinner time. So I feel like I was just getting like overwhelmed and stressed out and then the cake was bothering me. So whatever, you'll see. <laughs> Here is my first layer of icing. That was gonna be basically just my glue. And then I was gonna go ahead, I practice these little pretty flowers. It's gonna make flowers and I don't know, I just, did, I just couldn't do it this time. I don't know, but it is what it is. The cake still turned out nice, and at least I had a pretty cake topper, but I just, over the years, I've learned that, like I always say, done is better than perfect, but also that in my children's eyes, any cake is perfect, and to not be so hard on myself. So I figured out how to do the flowers the way I wanted them and then I did them and it just didn't happen, <laughs> I don't know. So after heating the cake, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe that off. And I'm gonna go in with the lighter pink and try the flowers again, you know? First you don't succeed, try again. But nope, I failed twice, two times in a row. <laughs> You can peep Ella tasting icing in the background, but I hate it how that looked too. So I grabbed one of these other cake tools that I never used before to try to make it look a little bit better. Um, you know, I could have done more if I would have planned on having a plain cake, like decorating with flowers or something like that. But I was like, I was just over it after trying three different times to decorate it and just felt like I was wasting my time. So it was delicious. So that's all that matters.
Finally, I was done with the cake, which thank God, because I was tired of looking at that thing. <laughs> and now I am in bed um, filling the goodie bags because I was just so tired of being on my feet. So I'm, I got these goodie boxes actually from Amazon. They're inexpensive and they came with a ton, even though I only needed six because um, that was how many children we were having, including my own. So there's only three additional kids, which were all um, their cousins. So this is what I'm stuffing their goodie bags with. Then I'm gonna go downstairs after I fill up their pinatas. And I really like using my um, like pinata and the goodie bags as part of the decor because I feel like it's functional decor. It makes sense because you're using them anyway, so why not make it be decor if that makes any sense? <laughs> Another little tip that I wanted to share with you is that you'll see like I'm putting the most random things in here. Some of these are from Target Dollar Spot from Valentine's Day and like different holidays, things like that. I like to stock up on this kind of stuff, not just for goodie bags, but also like we have a little treasure chest that we use for treats for the kids when they do their sticker chart. Just, it's inexpensive and it's easy, so we just keep this little bag in our basement full of these like fun little um, prizes as the kids call them. I really love how everything came out. I feel like I'm getting to relive my childhood with like all of this pink stuff and glitter and streamers. This is Ella's big birthday present from us. Um, and you'll see the other stuff that I'm gonna go ahead and put together. And Chris actually wrapped all the presents because no matter how hard I try, I'm actually the worst wrapper in the United States of America. It looks like I just crunched up paper and taped it on. I just, I don't know why, I just cannot wrap good at all. Um, so yeah, when he has time, he wraps the gifts because he can't stand how my wrapping looks either. So I got her this fake makeup from Amazon. It was really inexpensive. She loves doing makeup. She's always getting into my makeup. So she, anytime that we caught her being quiet today, she was playing with this fake makeup, which is adorable. She also loves getting into my jewelry. So getting her her own little jewelry like that. Pretty much, she is very much a girly girl. It's a little purse from Amazon as well. Um, but at the same time, she loves riding the quad and she loves jumping on the trampoline and playing in the dirt and the sand. So she has both of those like sides to her. So I love that about her. This book is also another thing that I use as a functional decor. So if you have like, if your kids like to read or you like getting the books, a book with the birthday theme sitting out is really cute and you'll see it at the end here. But another beautiful thing is fresh flowers. I love having fresh flowers around when I can anyway. So I love being able to still enjoy them after the birthday is over. So yes, we just got some pretty pink roses from our local grocery store.
I just felt like they needed a little something else. I'm using some more of that tool because I have so much left over, which I, again, I'm sure that I will use it in the future, um, especially since we're ex expecting our second girl, which by the way, the next birthday coming up is November, which is Chris's birthday. He is born on 11-11. I always say 11-11, I got my wish, which is Chris, which is so corny, but I still love to say that. And then after that, Everly will be born. So it's kind of crazy to think about, but then next kid's birthday party I have is Tanner's and he has gone through all of the themes. He loves talking about his birthday parties all year round. All of my kids do that. And he went from having a troll's birthday to an ugly doll's birthday to now being scared of ugly dolls and then having a Ninja Turtles birthday. So as of today, Tanner's having a Ninja Turtle birthday in January. So let's see what kind of birthday he actually wants in January. I think it'll be pretty funny to see. So these little party tags were like a last minute thing that I found at Joanne Fabrics on their clearance. And I was like, oh, this is a gold. It's like a dollar. Perfect, I'll add them to the goodie bags. And then I was like, no, I'm not gonna add them to the goodie bags. There's not really a space for them. And when we put um, the tool on these vases, I was like, okay, I think that the little party and the little touch of glitter will look perfect on these. So. That's just how things come together for me. I save a bunch of stuff in my basement from everybody's birthday parties and kind of just like throw things together. So this is another small fail on my part. I've never purchased fabric before, like for a runner or anything like that. I've gotten it to make blankets and one time to cover a pillow, which was also a fail. Um, so I definitely ordered way too small for this fabric um, at Joanne Fabrics, but whatever, it still turned out nice. It was a nice little touch. And then I got the same thing again to put on the island, and I love how that looked out there. It was like the perfect length and everything. But yeah, next time I need to remember how big my tiny room table is and order a lot larger. Another tip that I have for you is to order acrylic. Um, I have two acrylic cake stands, I have an acrylic cake pop stand, and now I just ordered this because this was our first brunch ever. So I've never had a birthday party this early, but I truly love it and now I don't ever wanna go back to having a later birthday party again. But um, I just say to order acrylic because you can use it for any theme. Obviously it's clear, but you know, especially when you have both a boy and a girl and just having all these different themes or you can use these if you're hosting a baby shower. I know not a lot of us are hosting very many things right now, but you get what I'm trying to say. It can go with anything so you don't have to keep buying more stuff.
Something else that I've started doing is using these stands for napkins and utensils and plates because you know people are always like hey where can I grab this and you can just point them in this direction they can't miss it um, they can see everything on there and I just feel like it's just easy especially it's nice to set things up ahead of time instead of like just throwing plates out once people get there so yeah I really like having this stand I got this from Big Lots this summer So I can't even tell you how many times that Chris makes fun of me for doing this, which is also these cards, you can't really tell because of the lighting, but they are like that blush pink color with a gold trim. Um, but Chris is like, really, you're labeling fruit and you're labeling bacon and you're labeling eggs, but I just think it makes it look nice. I also ordered these little ballerinas um, to go in cupcakes, which I wound up getting a ton of little gluten-free desserts from this amazing shop in Newtown. Um, if you live anywhere by Newtown, Pennsylvania, you have to check out Sweet Confetti. She did such an amazing job. All I told her was that we're gluten-free and we're having a ballerina birthday. And she took care of the rest down to putting little tutus on the mason jars. You'll see, but anyway, I can't recommend her enough. Um, so we did not do cupcakes. So I was like, I still wanna use these pretty ballerinas. So I just put them all around and I add more tomorrow, which you'll see in the next portion of this video. This is actually footage from our family vlog, but I wanted to include it in here as well. So as you can see, Ella's not thinking her mom screwed up her cake. She's thinking it's the best thing in the world. So moving on, so I don't get emotional. Um, we went in the morning and picked up bagels. We got regular bagels and gluten-free bagels, regular donuts and gluten-free donuts, um, and then picked up the stuff from Sweet Confetti. And everything just turned out so gorgeous. We had so much food left over though, which I was actually surprised because everyone ate, but yeah, you'll see. Sweet Confetti also made this adorable menu, which was so thoughtful, just like explaining what is in everything that was out. And then I forgot to take a video of the food, but we just got a large tray of scrambled eggs and breakfast potatoes and bacon. And like I said, we still had tons of leftover food.
so I hope that you all enjoyed this video and that if anything it inspired you or gave you the confidence to throw a birthday party yourself to do some things yourself but to also outsource some things so you don't drive yourself crazy and again your kids will think it's amazing don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up i